The Sistine Chapel is the most famous chapel in all of the church, and for good reasons. The Sistine Chapel gained most of its fame from the beautiful frescoes done by Michelangelo. He depicted Bible stories and a lot of the famous prophets, and also a lot of nudity. Go, 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 Charlie. It's your birthday. We're going to party like it's your birthday. And now in all seriousness, here is a brief history of the Sistine Chapel. The Sistine Chapel was built between 1477 and 1481 for Pope Sixtus IV. This is where the chapel gets its name. A chapel built for Pope Sixtus is called the Sistine Chapel. It makes sense. The Sistine Chapel was also built to serve the function of the private chapel of the popes in Vatican City, meaning that it is used for all papal ceremonies. The most important of these would obviously be the papal conclave. Yes, the Sistine Chapel is the place where all the cardinals meet to elect a new pope. The architecture of the Sistine Chapel is actually quite simple. The chapel is a rectangular structure with large sloping walls. The proportions of the Sistine Chapel mirror those of Solomon's Temple of Jerusalem, described in the Old Testament. There are also six vaulted windows on each of the two main walls, and there is a large barrel-vaulted ceiling. The walls of the Sistine Chapel were painted by some of the best artists of the Renaissance. The north, south, and entrance walls of the Sistine Chapel are made up of four groups of paintings. These groups are the lunettes, the pontus, the stories of the lives of Christ and Moses, and the drapes. The lunettes are paintings of the forefathers of Christ. The pontus are full-figure paintings of the saints. The stories of the life of Christ were originally eight paintings. These eight were the baptism of Christ, the temptations of Christ, the calling of the first apostles, the sermon on the mount, the handing over of the keys, the Last Supper, the resurrection of Christ, and the nativity scene. The stories of the life of Moses are set up the same way on the opposite wall. These eight paintings were the birth and finding of Moses, the legacy and death of Moses, the punishment of Korah, Dathan, and Abram, the handing over of the tablets of the law, the passage of the Red Sea, the events in the life of Moses, the journey of Moses in Egypt, and the dispute over the body of Moses. These parts of the Sistine Chapel were done by, and please excuse any pronunciation errors, Pietro Pergino, Sandro Botticelli, Cosimo Rosselli, and Domenico Gerlandio. Finally, the drapes were designed and woven by Raphael. The original ceiling of the Sistine Chapel was painted as a blue sky to resemble heaven with golden stars. So how did Michelangelo get involved? This happened in 1504 when a crack appeared on the vaulted ceiling due to weak foundations from a drainage problem. This caused Pope Julius II to hire Michelangelo to fresco the ceiling. Michelangelo was originally commissioned to paint the Twelve Apostles, but he thought it would turn out bad. So Pope Julius II granted him freedom to paint whatever his little heart desired. This massive project took almost four years, beginning on May of 1508 and finally finishing in October of 1512. The whole ceiling is a collection of fresco paintings. A fresco is simply a painting done on wet plaster. Michelangelo developed a scaffolding system that allowed him to work so high up. The scaffold had a step design to accommodate for the curvature of the ceiling. This allowed him to do most of the work standing upright. The ceiling is laid out into five main sections. These sections are the central narratives, or stories, the pendentives, the prophets and sibyls, the medallions, and the ancestors of Christ. The central narratives run through the center of the ceiling and show nine stories from Genesis. They are the separation of light from dark, the creation of the sun, moon, and the planets, the creation of Adam, the creation of Eve, original sin and the banishment from the garden of Eden, the sacrifice of Noah and the flood, and the drunkenness of Noah. The medallions are located between the central narratives. The prophets and sibyls are arranged on the sides of the walls. There are four pendentives one in each corner of the chapel. Finally, there are eight webs along the walls that depict the ancestors of Christ. The most famous painting on the Sistine ceiling is the creation of Adam. It is one of the nine central narratives. This fresco depicts God floating through the sky with his horde of angels towards Adam. God's finger is extended towards Adam's to endow him with the spark of life. Pope Clement VII loved Michelangelo's work on the ceiling so much that he wanted him to paint the altar wall of the Sistine Chapel. Pope Clement VII died, but Pope Paul III renewed the project and ordered Michelangelo to paint the fresco of the Last Judgment. 
Michelangelo used the whole wall to do this fresco. A massive surface measuring 44 feet 6 inches high by 39 feet 7 inches long. This project took him 6 years to complete. The painting revolves around Christ, who is in the center. On the left, the chosen rise from their graves and ascend towards heaven, but on the right, the damned descend into hell. Hopefully, now you can see why the Sistine Chapel is the most famous chapel in all of the church.